and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Ladies and gentlemen, everything has a season. We see the same things in our lives right now that we just read in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Oftentimes in our natural lives, we go through seasons. We go through things that will shift and change. We get a new job. We get married. We have kids. Kids become teens. Kids leave home. We move and we retire. Yes. <laughs> All those things are natural points of life that we experience when we enter a new season. But there are times we make a conscious choice to change our direction. I love the spring season. Uh -oh. I love the spring season and it seems like there's a little bit more happiness in the air. Y'all yeah. not walking around looking all mean and bothered. Love the spring. Don't have to wear so many layers. Don't really have to worry about too much, but just freedom in the springtime. I love the spring. But one of the things that comes with this new season, this springtime, is that it's letting us know that summer is there. And that's one thing that Brother Man does not like. <laughs> with that new season, it means a few things. It's another year that's getting ready to pass by that we're all getting older. Another chance, another opportunity for gray hairs to start coming. Year, brothers, for us to the possibility for us to start going bald. Okay, amen, amen. You have all yours, praise God. I didn't come over there and touch you. Get some of that anointing. But some of you, you may be entering into new seasons. Maybe entering into a new season of life. It's a natural occurrence. Whether you have just become a parent, gotten a new job, started or finished school, you're entering a new season. Others, you may be recognizing that with the things that are going on in your life, the way that things have been going, that you need to enter a new season, that you need to make a decision for a shift, you need to make a decision for a change. And while these seasons come, not only for individuals, but for churches, they can bring freshness and they can bring excitement. It can also be a little scary. Starting a new job is both exciting and it's scary. Come on and help me preach. Getting married is both exciting and scary. Having kids is both exciting and scary. Making a decision to follow Christ is both exciting and scary. Solomon, who is most likely the writer of Ecclesiastes, which is the book that we just read from before, he was the son of King David. And after King David died, Solomon became king. Let's look at verse 1. When the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon, his son. I'm about to go the way of all the earth, he said. So be strong, show yourself a man, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in his ways and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and requirements, as written in the law of Moses, so that you may prosper in all you do in wherever you go. The first C that we'll experience with the new season is something that we tend to have a love-hate relationship with. Somebody shout change. Change. Hallelujah. Change. We tend to have a love-hate relationship with it. Solomon was going through a new season and he was experiencing some change. His dad was dying. The man who had led Israel successfully for so many years. The man that people loved. The man who was after God's own heart. Somebody said he was a man after God's own heart. And now what was going on this new season in Solomon's life is that he was now expected to fill the shoes of his father. Can you imagine yourself in that predicament? So he was experiencing some sorrow, of course, at the death of his father. What do we say? That new seasons can be both exciting scary. and scary. Yes. He was experiencing some sorrow at the death of his father. 
But surely he was probably a little bit excited to be king. Can you think of a time in your life or think of where you are right now where you know you're entering a new season? There's some sorrow with it. There's some fear with it. But you're also excited. about it. that's where we're solid. This love-hate relationship with change is that we want things to change because if they don't change, things will be a little boring. We'll get used to them. Uh, but then we don't want things to change because we're afraid of what we don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Change brings uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. It scares them too. Nobody likes to walk a road and they're uncertain. Nobody likes to go down the hallway. It's like you're in a horror movie. You gotta go down a real big hallway. Y'all remember that movie, The Shining? Y'all yeah. <laughs> remember that movie? Yeah. Anybody know that movie with Jack Nicholson? Yeah. Was that who it was? Yeah. Boy, that thing still haunts me to this day. Pray for me. The things we don't know. We're excited to get married, but what will married life look like? I'm excited to have children, but can I really raise them? I'm excited about starting a new job, but will I really be able to accomplish the goals? I'm excited about the growth of Finishers Church, but what will that growth require of me? Amen. Yes. Amen. New seasons bring change. We like to know in advance what the change is going to require. Uh, but the only thing, the only problem with wanting to know in advance or knowing in advance what the change requires of us is this, that that requires no faith. Right. Hello, happy right. birthday. Amen. If we were to know in advance everything that was going to happen in the future, ah. what the change was going to require of us, there would be no point for faith. Right. Guess what? Second Corinthians tells us this. Right. That we are to walk by faith. Right. That we are to walk by faith right. and not by sight. Right. If we're going to grow in our relationship with God, if we're going to be able to make it to the next new season, we've got to walk by faith and not by sight. I encourage your neighbor to say, walk by faith, walk by faith. Not, by not by sight. This encourages us and requires us to move forward in the midst of change and uncertainty. To hear the word of the Lord this morning, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is just for you. If you don't get anything else, get this. God wants you to move forward Amen. in the midst of change and uncertainty. It brings pleasure to the Lord. To the Lord. Yes. Hebrews tells us what? Without faith. It is impossible to please the Lord. So we see that this uncertainty, these new seasons, and please the Lord. They all work together. Is anybody going to embrace uncertainty when they leave this place today? Yes. Yes. For Solomon to grow, for Solomon to please the Lord, he had to experience and embrace the change. Yes. Somebody shout change.